and then she wrote just another uh, adding to my first reaction Scott because she she uh, wrote this underneath that comment she wrote another comment and she said I receive I received today the prophecy of the met what the prophecy of the news magazine from J.R. Church in the December number I read an article from J.R. Church titled we are called unto eternal glory in that article he says quote at present blood courses through our veins but when we get to heaven and receive our new bodies we will be filled with glory the blood of Christ was shed that we might obtain his glory he gives us eternal life could it be then that coursing through our veins the veins of our new bodies will not be blood but glory the light of the presence of God the Shekinah end of quote okay, so he uh, he agrees with me apparently <clears throat> about light being you know or light being uh, in our bodies instead of blood and uh, I've heard different people talk about that along the way and I just kind of added my own my own things to it and uh, he mentions the Shekinah and that she said I'm a bit confused about he mentions the Shekinah because I remember Mike she's talking about Mike Hoggard I remember Mike talked taught something about the Shekinah but I cannot remember what what it was at this moment and uh because Mike Hoggard uh, talks about the Shekinah is not even mentioned in the Bible. And uh, from what I understand, it's it's not mentioned in the Bible. So where does it come from? And uh, some people say it's from, it's actually an occult th uh, thing where Shekinah is the, is the wife of God and all this stuff. But anyways, uh, I'm not sure about that. I've never read, read that word in the Bible and it's a, it's supposedly it's a Hebrew word and if anyone knows um, if it's in the Bible then they could let me know but as far as I know it's not in the Bible <clears throat> okay nevertheless this idea that we perhaps do not have blood but instead light or call it glory courses through our veins is also named I thought I would share this with you okay so she was just showing that to me that he had said that and I really appreciate that if she ever finds this video that would be great because I have no way of getting in contact with her <clears throat> okay um, another person named Tianaka has sent uh, sent me a message and she said hi Scott and this is a woman that I, I met who uh, and I was able to have correspondence with that um, at the time I was a member of that uh, community but through issues I do not wish to get into now I was I don't am not a part of it anymore and I have no contact with these people but I was able to uh, receive these contacts from them into my email but I was never able to respond to them because they came from the community so I wish I could contact these people because they were my friends but now I have no way of contacting them it was a very upsetting uh, situation but she said hi Scott I have only read the first six paragraphs so far which is just recapping but I had forgotten that I'd wanted to ask you why you say that the dead would come down from heaven to meet us in the air because she's the woman who asked what's the significance of the dead rising first at the rapture okay my understanding is and I may be wrong but I had thought that the dead in Christ were in paradise or Abraham's bosom which I believe was was where the rich man sees Lazarus across the gap in Luke 16 in my mind this place would be in the center of the earth as all the descriptions of death talk about going down so I thought that all will rise the dead first then we who remain alive to all meet them in the air and then go to be with Christ in heaven our Old Testament Saints already there or have I just gotten myself confused 
that this story of Lazarus was before Jesus ascended uh, to heaven himself, then he comes back and gets them the Old Testament saints, which is why some saints rise out of the graves. So therefore, as, as you said, they would already be there in heaven. He has gone to repair a place, so heaven isn't ready for us yet. That's another reason I thought no saints were with him in heaven yet. So I didn't realize I was confused on this. Hopefully you can understand my thought process and provide some clarity. Maybe it's just my bedtime and I'm not thinking straight. Thank you, Katie. P.S. Whenever you get time, no pressure. In the meantime, I have more reading to do. Okay. That was her whole statement. Okay. So let me just kind of back up and see if I can figure out exactly what she's saying here. Um, my understanding is... Um, but, uh, and I may be wrong, but I had thought that the dead in Christ were in paradise or Abraham's bosom. That, that is correct. Okay. Abraham's bosom. She mentioned Luke 16 that talks about Abraham's bosom. And this is where a big controversial passage of scripture in Luke 16, Jesus talks of the rich man and Lazarus and being in Abraham's bosom, you know, Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom in paradise and below them there was a chasm and then um, the rich man was in hell they were able to communicate and uh, it, Jesus goes through the whole conversation they had and so he uses their names and so in the Bible when when a parable is being written uh, Jesus you know they would they would always write and Jesus spake another parable and Jesus spake another parable well, before this story, Jesus, it does not say, and Jesus spake another parable. It says, Jesus just went on to the story and said, there was this rich man, and there, uh, and there was Lazarus. And they went to Abraham's bosom, and Abraham said this and did that. And it's like, if it's a parable, he would not use people's names. He would not have said, you know, the things he said. And what what would be the point of of that parable if if it was a parable, I mean, what what is what is the message? It's it's, you know, I take this to be absolutely literal because he's using their names. He uses the name of Moses. He uses the name of Abraham. He uses the name of Lazarus. He he didn't say a certain man did this or a, you know, he called the rich man the rich man without using his name because the dead are not remembered there. But Lazarus is remembered because he was a righteous man. He, I think I said the dead are not remembered anymore, but I meant to say the wicked are remembered no more. And uh, so th the point is that it's a it's a literal occurrence that happened there. And so the at that time before Jesus had resurrected from the dead, he uh, the the righteous saints of the Old Testament period went to Abraham's bosom. But it talks about in Ephesians where um, it says if if he since he um, ascended what does it mean but also that he descended into the low, lower earthly regions the Bible talks about there's old, lower earthly regions that are down there literally that Jesus went into in his soul and spirit while his body was in the grave and he preached to them that were down there and it doesn't say he preached the gospel to the damned it says he preached. It doesn't say what he preached. He could have been preaching. He could have been preaching that the seed of the serpent had failed. He could have been preaching that, you know, to to the to the uh, to the angels that attempted to stop him from coming. The the ones that are bound in Tartarus. He could have been telling them, "You failed. I, I I am victorious. I have I have come to defeat death." He could have been preaching to the, them in Abraham's bosom. I am victorious. Come with me because. What happened when he seen this this is where it gets into another question that I used to have, which was it's a paradox. It's like the thief on the cross said to Jesus, or Jesus said to the thief on the cross, after he repented, he said, Truly this day you will be with me in paradise. And so after Jesus resurrected, he went to uh the Mary came to him and said, uh, you know, he he revealed himself to Mary when she thought he was the gardener and he he said, do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. 